So here we have it, the brand new fragrance by the company Jean-Paul Gaultier. I know this has been an anticipated release for many. As a matter of fact, it's not available in the States yet. Today's date is July 10th, as of when I'm shooting this video. Hopefully it's going to be available soon, but this one is Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. I'm excited to tell you all about this fragrance, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin my fragrance review of Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier, tell you all about this fragrance and how you can win a five milliliter decant of this fragrance, I do want to mention that if you are a fan of fragrance-related content like reviews, top 10 videos, giveaways, unboxings, and more, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. And while you're at it, if you can give this video a thumbs up, it would really mean a lot to me. And so here we have a three-way collaboration among perfumers Christophe Reynaud, Quentin Biche, and Natalie Chetto. Natalie Chetto has done Superman Au Fresh by Jean-Paul Gaultier, and so she's not a newcomer to the Jean-Paul Gaultier olfactive family. Quentin Biche has done everything from Delina by Parfum de Marly, Fleur Narcotique by Ex Nihilo, and many, many others. And so we're dealing with some perfumers that have pretty established resumes and a really solid repertoire. And so here we have the new boxing-inspired fragrance. And so the red of the box is actually uh, inspired by a boxer shorts. And here we also have a crown on the bottle, which is something that's been done before by brands like Royal Crown, also K by Dolce Gabbana, as well as a few others. But in any case, this is a caramel dominant fragrance. So as soon as I heard that, I was like, uh oh, this is going to be a gourmand. This is going to be right up my alley. And we also have tonka bean, clary sage, and a few other ingredients. And my nose actually picks up on, on a few ingredients that are not listed in the note breakdown. So I'm excited to give you my thoughts on it. But if you are interested in entering for your chance to win a five milliliter decant of this fragrance, all you have to do is just leave a comment down below letting me know what is your current favorite fragrance. That's all you got to tell me and your location. Make sure you like this video and I will be picking the winning comment in one week's time. So definitely make sure to come back to this video in one week to see if you've won. I will pin your comment to the top of the comment thread. And with that being said, let's start things off with the presentation. So right in the opening of this fragrance, you have this combination of sweet and fresh. And I'm guessing that that sweetness is coming from that caramel accord. Now, at no point throughout the life of this fragrance does it smell milky or lactonic, which is probably a good thing given the fact that some milky fragrances like Quilombo by Fueguia can actually come across smelling a little bit of a novelty fragrance. That's not what you're getting here. So you get that sweetness from the caramel. You also have that creamy coumarinic vibe from the tonka bean that's in the base, but it's not a tonka bean strong enough that it puts it in the vein of fragrances like Versace Eros or Mandarina Duck Pure Black. It's not that kind of a tonka bean. And so I feel like the caramel lends it a little bit of uniqueness. Now this fragrance actually did remind me of a couple other fragrances on the market. I know it gets compared to some of the Armani Code flankers by Giorgio Armani. I actually think this smells kind of similar to Le Beau by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And with that, it also smells kind of similar to uh, a fragrance by Calvin Klein called Eternity Now, which was kind of like a more modern take on Eternity, which is a classic. Now, the thing is, while it does have caramel and tonka bean and some other gourmand leaning ingredients, I actually pick up on a little bit of like a fig slash coconut vibe from this fragrance, which is really, really nice. None of those two ingredients are listed in the note breakdown, but again, you know, a lot of notes that are listed in the note breakdown are based off of an aroma molecule that is used in the actual ingredients list that is found in multiple ingredients in the same way that eugenol is not only found in clove, but it's also found in bay leaf. Coumarin is not only found in tonka bean, but it's also found in cinnamon. And so perfumers have a little bit of leeway in terms of what ingredients they want to list in the note breakdown. But you definitely get that fig slash coconut leaning uh, caramel and tonka bean nuance that's happening in here. And 
The clary sage is probably coming from a molecule known as sclerine, which is used in a lot of fragrances, including Hermes H24. And that seems to be the new popular ingredient. And so we're kind of shying away from Ambroxan and we're entering sclerine territory. But I think the freshness is a really nice contrast. And I think it also increases the versatility of the fragrance. And so had the clary sage ingredient not been in here, I would have said that, okay, this fragrance is really good for like a club environment. Uh, party time you know if you're going out on a night out if you're spending a romantic evening with your significant other it would be that type of a fragrance but I think the inclusion of this glaring kind of makes it an office appropriate fragrance perhaps not as much of an office fragrance as something like a Versace Dylan Blue or a Dior Sauvage or something like that because those are a little bit fresher but this one does definitely pack that sweet punch in the base, but it's not so strong that I would classify this as a gourmand fragrance. If anything, it has some aromatic properties, so I might say an aromatic woody or something like that, but I think if you like sweet fragrances, but you don't want them sweet all the way, you want this element of freshness in there, I would definitely check out Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier. Let's finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, this fragrance does kind of possess a DNA that I have smelled before. However, it's still unique on account of that clary sage note that is found in here. And so while it does kind of have like this coconut fig sweetness on account of that caramel accord that I have encountered in fragrances before, I would say it still retains its uniqueness by having that fresh overtone on account of the clary sage. And it does have a smell that I think people around you will really appreciate and enjoy. In terms of the longevity on it, I got eight hours on my skin, so the longevity is actually pretty good. In terms of the projection, it projected very well for the first two hours of application, and it actually didn't start sitting closer to the skin until about that six hour mark. And so performance of this fragrance is really good. The versatility is also really good. I think it would work well in every season except for the summer, unless you're wearing it on a cool evening or if you're wearing it indoors in a climate controlled environment I think you'll be perfectly fine I think this one does lean a little bit masculine but if you're a confident woman please wear it wear what you love wear what makes you happy and I do think that this one kind of gravitates towards a younger demographic as opposed to an older demographic and no you do not need to be a boxing fan in order to appreciate this fragrance and in terms of the presentation I think this is kind of what brands are doing nowadays they might be leaning in the direction of kit uh, but I think they're wanting to put out a bottle that is memorable, something that will stand the test of time. And I think we've seen that with a lot of classic fragrances as well, they might try to put out something that's a little whimsical and something that's a little quirky. And sometimes it works. In the case of like a One Million by Paco Rabanne, you know, that bottle is recognizable. Jean-Paul Gaultier's Le Mans, that bottle is recognizable. And I think they're managing to do the same thing with this one. And I actually like this cap a lot better than the cap for Dolce & Gabbana K, but that's a personal decision. So my final verdict on this fragrance is if you're looking for something that strikes a nice balance between fresh and sweet, please check out Scandal by Jean-Paul Gaultier when it becomes available in your area. If you are situated in a lot of the eastern parts of the world, maybe you're in Europe or another part of the globe where this fragrance is available, I hope you have the opportunity to sample it very soon. And I'm always curious to get your thoughts on it. Leave a comment down below if you've had the opportunity to sample it. And once again, if you're interested in entering for your chance to win a five milliliter decant of this fragrance, this is a worldwide giveaway. Just leave a comment down below letting me know what is your location, what country are you in, or what state are you in if you're in the United States. And also, what is your current favorite fragrance? Thank you so much for watching. If you took something of value from this video, please do consider supporting this channel by subscribing to it. And also, if you can like this video, that would really mean a lot for the YouTube algorithm. Love you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.